Hello, it is Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday crossword today, which means we're going to be solving what is presumably another fairly approachable themed crossword puzzle. Let's find out if that's the case. This hopefully approachable themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, the Lake House Bros, Jake Rodkin, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are, of course, sustaining this channel and bringing us this series, and I'm very grateful to them for that. So thank you to those five. Thank you to everybody who is a patron. Thanks to you if that includes you. And if you'd like it to include you, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field where you can find the bonus videos available to patrons as well as the Let's Check the Crosses official mug for benefactors. Thank you again to all of the patrons who keep this channel going. And please do also subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That is a big help in terms of spreading this channel to other people. And uh, I appreciate it. So thank you for that. And there is also the Daily Solve Discord chat server. You can join that to chat with other members of this community. It's a nice, friendly place. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video. All right. So let's move right along. I'm running, as I was yesterday, a bit late today. So do have to get this on the way. This is a Tuesday crossword constructed by Gia Bosco, who uh, I think this is her third crossword for the New York Times. And it was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, see how we do and what she's got in store for us. Egyptian reptile, that's a symbol of royalty. Is it the asp? Uh, I believe so. Symbol of royalty. In addition, also, let's put that in and see if it, if it helps. Oh, we've already found a theme clue. It looks like, oh, and this is an unusually sized grid, isn't it? It's taller than, than most crossword, most standard crossword grids. Oh, no, it's not. I think it might be of ordinary height, but of of, of narrower width. It's only, what, 14, uh, 14 cells wide, and... No, it's both. It's 14 by 16 rather than 15 by 15. Interesting. All right. Presumably that will be relevant in some way. So phrase that would be appropriate at the end of 53 across. Well, we obviously don't know what that is just yet. So let's keep looking around. Pasture could be a, uh, a lee, a lay. I always forget which it is. Um, but it is a, it is a pasture. Animals may graze there. Oh, here's already more. Having many syllables like this answer, 18 across and especially 53 or 57 across. Having many syllables like this answer. And here we have in a, in a noisy and unruly manner. Over the top or, or something to that effect. I'm not sure. Phrase that would be appropriate. Okay. Give it to someone from a younger generation. You could pass something on to them, maybe. I'm not certain this is the answer. No, and it isn't. Oh, oh pass down, because uh, actress Falco of Nurse Jackie is Edie Falco, also um, on The Sopranos. Okay, big name in swabs. So, uh, cotton swabs, <laughs> the big name there would be Q-tip, which you shouldn't use to insert into your ear canal, they, they frequently say. I, I just have no idea what this what this is. Having many syllables. In a, in a noisy and unruly manner. Hmm. There's probably a U here following the Q. Hardens to, yes, inures to. If you, inure, if you become inured to something, you uh, harden to it. You become sort of desensitized to it or accustomed to it. Uh, in that case... Ergo, therefore, no, because this is foie gras, French delicacy, goose, the uh, sort of goose liver dish. In that case, if so, oh, in yours, with an I. Okay. Is there a distinction between those, or is it similar to sort of amend and emend, where they're they're very very similar? 
I'll have to look that up. I'm curious. It's really something. And imagines. And here we have like a cyclops, one-eyed. I'm finding this more, so far, more of a challenge than the ordinary Tuesday, than a typical Tuesday. Although well, people said they felt that way about yesterday's Monday. Uh, it's really something. Oh, a noun. A noun is some is a thing. It's a person, place, or thing. Oh, imagine supposes. There we go. Okay, okay. This is coming together. So this doesn't feel correct to me. I feel as though it feels as though I've done something. Oh, foie gras with an e. I'm sorry. That makes this look more plausible. In a noisy and unruly manner. Listen up in Lima, oye, and then wraps up, sews up, you sew something up, you wrap it up, you finish it, picked a card, you drew a card from a deck, in addition, yeah, this must be right, I'm, I'm really stumped by these, hope I can figure it out. Fails totally. If one fails totally, some oh, it flops. As in a film, it fails totally, flops. Vaccine regulating organization would be the FDA in the United States. And the Wall Street index with the, um, could be, well, a Wall Street index with the, could be the Dow, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, and then some overhangs are awnings from buildings. Phrase that would be appropriate well, I still don't know um, because I've not looked down at that revealer. Maybe I should, but I'm kind of I, I'm sort of intrigued by the mystery of what on earth is going on here. Might be might be very obvious to many of you. Uh, has not yet been obvious to me. So phrase. Oh, I don't know. Sorry. Okay, what else can we solve? Language of Vientian Lao. And actress Christine of the Blacklist. Um, I've never seen this, but there's an actor, Christine Lottie. This could be the answer because I'm fairly confident about Lau. So ankle bone. Uh, I'm not sure. Johnny Walker or Jim Beam are whiskeys. Uh, sorry, Johnny Walker or Jim Beam is a whiskey. Um fell into a trap that I often warn against, which is that in an or clue, because we're listing these two things, it may look like we're referring to a plural, but we're not because we're only referring to either Johnny Walker or Jim Beam. So a single whiskey is being referred to here. Okay, a doofus could be a twit, maybe? Let's see if that works. We won a tiny tot? Maybe? Type that leans right. Okay, right. So type in the sense of typesetting, text. Uh, if it has that kind of a sort of rightward lean, you could describe it as italics. Oops, there we go. Okay, production at theater camp. Maybe you could put on a skit in some kind of performance or talent show or something, I suppose. Uh, oh, it's theater camp. So, right, you'll have lots of that sort of thing. Ankle bone. Oh, talus. Yes, of course, that's your ankle bone. So, so what on earth is this? Susquebedalian. Oh, right. Oh, obstreperously. Oh, these are just these are just words. But <laughs> obstreperous is a fairly normal word. But yeah, susquebedalian. That's really interesting. So that's referring to. Um, I, yeah, I don't think this is a word I've encountered before. Um, the I, I believe the ped here is referring to. Um, feet, sort of in the sense of metrical feet in poetry or something like that. But, you know, we're speaking of syllables. Um, so, we're, you know, you could apply this presumably to any any word. Uh, that's really clever. So it's self-referential. And then here we have obstreperously, which also has quite a few syllables. Uh, five syllables, which for a single word is, you know, relatively high. Very good. Okay, so th there'll be something related to this in uh, in the theme, or maybe we'll just have more examples of this sort of thing. Oh, maybe this is the revealer already. Sorry, that didn't occur to me. I think sesquipedalian might itself be the revealer, and the rest of the answers 
are going to be, as, as indicated, words with many syllables. Right. Okay. I think that'll probably be the case. Anyway, let's finish this off if I can. <laughs> Club Med is some sort of resort chain. Um, certainly know of it. A studio with Ars Gratia Artis in its logo. That's MGM, which has the famous lion uh, roar as it's, as it's in, in its animated sort of production logo. Frequent URL ending. Com for dot com, I suppose. Simple as that. Word before pop or tea. You could have ice pop or ice tea, the, the rapper and actor. Signals at an auction, maybe. Would be nods, I suppose. You know, silent auction, you could nod to the um, auctioneer. Chopped to bits. Diced, as in food. Reversible woven fabrics. Not sure offhand. What about this? Sir Walter Scott novel set in the Middle Ages. Ivanhoe. I think I think Sir Walter Scott was the was the um, I think broadly considered to be the originator of the historical novel. I believe that's the case. Director Duvernay, um, Ava Duvernay, the film director, and a South Park kid with a blue and yellow beanie. Oh, what are the names of the South Park characters? Cartman, this must be. Certainly wouldn't have uh, been able to know the, name them by beanie color, but uh, this must be the case. Okay. Gothic novelist Shelley, Mary Shelley, of course, known um, best known for Frankenstein, and reversible, oh, Damascus. Reversible woven fabrics, I suspect that's correct. So, oh, right, okay. Opposition to the removal of, oh, and it's a, it's a compound clue. Opposition to the removal of state support from the church. <laughs> okay, this will be anti-disestablishmentarianism, which is the sort of thing people like quoting as a word simply because it has quite a few syllables um, in it. So that would be your opposition to the removal of state support from the church because you are against the disestablishment of uh, a church, I mean, yeah, disestablishmentarian, I mean, disestablishment, I presume in this case, refers to a church as indicated in the, um, in the clue. So if you were, if you were against the Church of England, um, losing its state church status, you could maybe be described as anti-disestablishmentarianist. Okay, uh, very good. That was, a, that was a funny surprise. I'm very glad I didn't look at that earlier, because it it be it, it being a compound clue involving an even more ludicrously multisyllabic word was I think a very good uh, little sort of joke discovery. Stock market calculation could be yield. You could calculate stock market returns, yield on an investment. Um, marsupial that sleeps eighteen to twenty two hours a day is a koala. There we go. That sounds perfectly plausible. A double helix molecule would be DNA, which is famously arranged in that double helix pattern. Um, hold on, someone cries. They could yell, wait. And to whack as a fly could be to swat it. Wood for a baseball bat could be ash, I suppose. That sounds sounds right, I guess. And attention-reducing spa treatment would be a massage. Uh, someone irate could be angry or mad. And... A word often paired with hunter is gatherer when you're talking about sort of hunter-gatherer um, societies. And you won't believe it, but get this, I suppose. Resting place could be one's bed, of course. Chinese steamed bun would be bao, um, the food. And then field goal percentage, e.g., is a stat, a statistic. Plot element in Romeo and Juliet would be a tryst, a... Uh, sort of illicit romantic affair, and hogwash is rot, total nonsense, tripe. If you ate something, you had a bite. And ready, you could cry, which could be, I'm all set. Yes, there we go. Wiretapper, e.g., maybe is a spy, someone engaging in that kind of covert activity. And to increase the power of with up would be to amp up your excitement, maybe, at, at concluding this crossword. March 14th observance that might be celebrated with dessert in math class must be Pi Day, which would be celebrated on 
March 14th because of uh, referencing the 3.14 um, you know, starting digits of pi. Using the uh, that particular that um, date format, which is not used in most places. Uh, latka ingredient is a potato. Potato pancake is a latka. Oops, can't seem to type an O. Country whose name looks like something a marathoner might say. Oh, Iran or Iran, it, as as it could could you know would be the thing the marathoner would say. Spoken is oral, said aloud. Uh, bloke is a gent, gentleman. When said three times, classic Benny Goodman tune. Uh, oh, sing, sing, sing is a is a famous Benny Goodman tune. Um, you'd recognize it if you heard it. Uh, it's used in a lot of commercial contexts. And thus is ergo, uh, therefore. Oh, all oh, right. That was what <laughs> that was what I originally thought this was going to be. Um, fits more accurately here. And abbreviations sometimes repeated several times in a row could be et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. And an Apple desktop is an iMac, an Apple desktop computer. And a coffee alternative could be another caffeinated drink, tea. And there we go. That was the crossword for Tuesday, September 9th, 2023. A very nice, very nice theme that remained incredibly elusive to me for quite some time until I had spelled the vast majority of these words, as I recall. I think there were just, you know, just, just a handful of, of unfilled letters between the two of them before I realized, oh, it's just, they're just very multisyllabic words. That's the theme. And I really like that the first one was in fact the revealer unto itself and that we were taken by surprise with this I suppose hyphenated, although that's not probably not where you'd actually hyphenate the word anti-disestablishmentarianism, but I really like that I stumbled upon it, not yet knowing we were going to get this hilarious uh, multi row clue. And I suppose answer, and that's I suppose why the grid is of this width. Um Gia Bosco must have realized she could find she must have happened upon these words being of the same length and anti-disestablishmentarianism being twice that, it's an absolutely appropriate reason to modify a grid like this to, to account for the particular length of these words. And it's a nice, it's a sort of simple theme with incredibly uh, unusual and, and not very simple words, which is a nice combination. We do eventually just sort of, these, these are words that you wouldn't expect to be clued in a Tuesday crossword. Um, but as, as I did, you can just fill most of it in with crosses and that works just as well. So there we have it. A very nice Tuesday, uh, puzzle by Gia Bosco. Let me know how you, how you fared with this one. It might be slightly more challenging as Monday and Tuesdays than, than most week. Let me know if you, most weeks, let me know if you agree with that, um, or not either way. It's fine. And now I'm going to very, very quickly, um, look at a couple of clues from yesterday's crossword, because I did want to get back to this. So Dragon Traces points out regarding the character Minnesota Fats from uh, uh, from The Hustler, um, nice to remember Minnesota Fats was a real guy, not just a character in a movie. And Hugh Scott replies, the real guy took his name from the character, though. His real name was Rudolph Wander uh, Wanderin, and he later claimed the character was based on him, but the author of the original book denied that. There's been some controversy over it, so it's actually a little unclear. It is actually surprisingly unclear when you read about this, which I did after yesterday's puzzle. The real character, the real person being referenced here, um, actually did go by the name New York Fats. That that was he. He went by a number of different names, um, and that was the name by which he was known at the time the book was written, I believe. And he then saw the film. I think maybe even a couple of years after it was released, and then started saying publicly, well, this character is clearly based on me. And it seems actually very difficult to prove one way or the other. The, As indicated there, the author of the book strenuously always claimed the character had nothing to do with that person and was not based on him. Uh, but it does seem awfully coincidental. I think it really is difficult to to pin down. It, it's probably a bit... It's it, it may be the case that, if I had to guess, I would say the author probably... Had, had heard of this person's reputation and there is something of it in there, but it isn't a direct 
uh, sort of recreation, but I don't know. I, I really don't think there's any way to know for sure at this point in history. Uh, but it's very interesting. And a correction, oh, this is a correction from the same person, uh, oh, from one of those same people, uh, Hugh Scott, who points out, Cedar Point is the famous amusement park that I think you were thinking of. It's in Ohio. Yes, I'm sorry. I confused that with Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'm very sorry to anybody from Iowa or Ohio. That was completely wrong on my part. And uh, let's see, who's this? Uh, Joe Zichterman says, you solved 66 across through the crosses, didn't read the clue. Giant screen film format, which is IMAX. Indeed, I don't even remember seeing that. So I must have completely uh, missed it. And finally, Oscar Sigvardson says, I'm not sure we can designate Sorry, the original wraparound garment of the New York Times crossword, when Toga exists, which is entirely fair. I hadn't thought of that. Although, this was interesting, I thought, and actually somewhat surprising to me, Annie Prophet replied and says, while Toga has appeared an impressive 269 times, Sorry is a much more impressive 446. So it may be true that Sorry is, in fact, the official wraparound garment of the New York Times crossword. I don't know. Your opinions on that are welcome as well. Anyway, there we have it. That was the crossword for Tuesday, September 9th. That was today's videos. Uh, today's video, I should say. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Wednesday crossword. Maybe a bit of a step up in difficulty. Who knows? It's a midweek, mid-difficulty crossword. Do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.